My under eye bags are so big, they could double as my honeymoon suitcase. Hello my friends, welcome to my slightly belated January favorites video. Well, it's not a favorites video, it's a favorites and fails video. Basically what I do is I line up 10 products that I used and line them up from very, very bad to very, very good. We start at number 10, which is what we're gonna do right now. At number 10 this month, my biggest, biggest fail this month was a big shocker to me. Like I, when I got this in my Beautylish Lucky Bag, I was so stinking excited. I was like, yes, it was something I wanted for a really long time. I was so happy about it. And I, I am seriously crying in my heart over this. And this is the Becca Ombre Rouge Palette. Now, let me say some positives here. I did swatch this on my hand for you. The swatches come out very, very nice. They're very creamy, very buttery shadows. Here's the issue. Number one, they muddy together on the eyes. The shades do not have enough contrast in order to make a look that does not muddy. Uh, it just, they all mush together. The second issue I have with it is that it doesn't have a good lasting power. Um, by the end of the day, these are gone off my eyes. And to me, for a palette of this price, that's absolutely unacceptable. So I would definitely not recommend this palette. I would be hesitant to buy Becca eyeshadows in the future, and that makes me sad. Um, it makes me really sad. I would have to see some really good reviews on a Becca eyeshadow palette for me to invest in another one in the future. I'm, I'm crying in my heart because I love Becca and this makes me sad. At number nine this month is a product that I actually returned because I just couldn't wait any longer. I had to, I had an opportunity to go to Sephora and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take the stuff back and just be done with it. Um, and they were the Kat Von D Shade and Light Blush Duos. Uh, I, I bought them and before I got them in the mail, I saw Temptalia gave them an F. And if you don't know Temptalia, her blog, she is probably the number one beauty blogger of all time. Um, her blog is amazing and she scores everything. And for Temptalia to give something an F, it has to be pretty bad. Like it has to be really bad. And it's bad. It's really bad. The pigmentation on these things is is atrocious. Uh, I had Mickey and Mallory. That one was really was was terrible. The one of P off and Poe was a little bit better. And if it weren't for the price point, I probably would have kept P off and Poe. Uh, it kind of reminds me of a mediocre drugstore blush. Uh, something where you would be like, eh, I paid six bucks for it. I like it. It's nice. You know, wear it every once in a while. You know, it's fine. Uh, but not for $25. The lasting power was not good and it just was a horrible formula. Now, why I'm crying especially about this is because her old blush formula was my holy grail blush formula, the one that she discontinued. I'm so sad that it's gone and has been replaced with this terribleness. On the other side, one of my friends here on YouTube mentioned to me that they are now off of the Sephora website. Maybe they were getting such terrible reviews that they just took them down. Hopefully they're reformulating them and working through them again because I don't even I don't even know what they were thinking when they put them out on the market, whether that people were gonna think that this was gonna be okay. I mean, they're they're absolutely horrible. I did hear that there were a couple of them that were a little bit better. Some of the deeper shades were a little bit better, but mm, not good, not good at all. At number eight this month is the Essence Liquid Eyeliner. Now, I do want to show you the Essence Gel Liner. This one is wonderful, and I'm a huge Essence fan. I did not like the liquid liner, and I'll tell you the big reason why I didn't like it, and it's because of the brush. Okay, if you can see there, it's it seems like it's kind of a fine point, but when you put it on the eye, see how thick that is? It's really difficult to get it to be fine. It's just too difficult to work with. So when I use this on my eye, I can't get a wing. Um, I can put it all over the lid, but it does seep into my fine lines, so it takes some working with. So even for the price, I wouldn't recommend this just because of how difficult it is to work with, unless you like a really thick line. If you like a really thick line, you'll probably love it. I personally don't like it at all. Lasting power is still pretty good, but it's just that brush, man. The brush kills it. They should have made it just a little bit more fine pointed and it would have been a great product. Number seven starts getting into kind of the meh products for me. This is the Artist Couture by Angel. Uh, his name is Mac Daddy on YouTube. It is his highlighters. Um, and I feel like this is more of a personal preference thing overall. Uh, it comes like this. It comes with four uh, mineral style pots here. They're called Diamond Glow Powders. And let me just say the packaging is super cute here. It's this cute little box with this little bow ribbon and it's just, it's adorable packaging. My issue with these highlighters is they are not targeted, I don't think, to people who do not go clubbing. Um, they have a lot of glitter. They're targeted, I believe, toward the Instagram crowd. People that um, really want a glitter highlight. Glitter. Okay, so here are the four swatches. One, two, three, and four. 
and you can see the sparkle in them. This one is probably the most matte, but there's definitely sparkle in there as well. And it's not just shimmer, it's sparkle. The top one is called Conceited, the second is called Yes, the third is called Mermaid Fantasy, and then the fourth is called Illuminati. So along with them being straight up sparkle, they don't last on the face. They're a powder that just, if you get in a strong wind, they're gone. I mean, within two hours, they're completely gone off the face. So this is why I'm saying I feel like this is marketed and should be for people who are taking photographs for Instagram, or if you're taking photographs for a wedding and you want glitter on your cheeks, you want that fairy look. Um, I, I feel like this is not for the everyday person in just the sparkle of it and the lasting power. They're just not good for that. So there is a market for them. It's just, um, I'd be curious to know how these would work on the eyes. I feel like they might be nice eyeshadows rather than highlighters, but I haven't tried them for that purpose, so I can't review them for that purpose. Uh, but maybe a little bit of Fix Plus or something and then patting them onto the eyes may be gorgeous. All right, and number six, the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Cushion. Now, this I did do a review of and comparison with the Physician's Formula one. I would say that overall, in the end, I feel like now that I've figured out how I can best work this, I like this one better than the Physician's Formula. I do still feel like the Physician's Formula lasts a bit longer, but when I use this with my Real Technique sponge instead of the sponge that is included in here, the lasting power is much better. The finish is much better, and it's a much nicer product to use overall. When I specifically use my Real Techniques sponge, you could use a Beauty Blender as well. Um, this sponge I don't care for. I don't feel like it's effective as far as getting the look that I want to get. Now, the other thing is, is this is ridiculously overpriced. You get half as much product as a traditional foundation. I don't feel like it's worth that price difference. So if it's something that you're curious about, I would recommend trying it, but just know that you're getting half the product for twice the price and it may not be worth it to you. Okay, number five is a perfect place to put this because it's actually a skincare kit. Now, this is the way it looks when it's actually in the bag. This is by Skin Iceland and it is the Saving Face Recovery Kit for life's biggest moments. And it says, big interview and breakout coming on, one week before my wedding, five hours of sleep in five days, my under eye bags are so big, they could double as my honeymoon suitcase. This is a $50 bag. I got it at Ulta at full price and then I saw them on the the Ipsy website is an Ipsy deal for $20, so I got a second one. The reason why I got a second one is because there's certain things in here that I'm really, really enjoying and would purchase a full size of. So let's just kind of go through the different products. So the first thing in here is the Nordic Skin Peel. This is supposed to be an exfoliator, and it comes with all of these pads. Now, all together, I mean, this is an insane deal. If you like these products, it's an insane deal to get it for 50 bucks. For 20, it's even more ridiculous. Um, these are very, very cold, and that comes with most of these. Skin Iceland. They're going with the ice theme on this. You know that clean feeling you feel on your teeth after you use a really, really crisp toothpaste? That's the way your skin feels when you use this. If that sounds appealing to you, you'll probably love these products. It's very wet. It's very saturated with product. I use this about three times a week. They say you can use it daily if you don't have sensitive skin, but you get this entire full-size pack of it. It's 60 pads, um, and I feel like they're, they're very good to use. I don't know if they're actually doing anything, but they feel awfully good and they're rough enough that I feel like they could ex be exfoliating. So I'm just trusting that it's working, but I have no evidence to show that this one's working. Next is the cleanser. This is the Glacial Face Wash. Again, you're gonna end up with that cold feeling on your face after you use it. If you like um, lather on your skincare, this is gonna be great for you. It's very enjoyable to use. Of course, this is not a full size. I don't feel like it fully removes my makeup. I remove my makeup first, then I use this as a cleanser afterward. Works great for that. Um, but this is not a makeup remover, just so you know. Um, but I do feel like it works as a nice second pass over my face after I've removed my makeup. Now this is where we get into the stuff that I think makes it worth it. This is the Skin Iceland Icelandic Relief Eye Pen. This here, and I'm gonna open this up because this is kind of the reason why I wanted to try the, this, uh, this more from this brand, are these Skin um, Skin Iceland Hydro Cool Firming Eye Gels. These, I, I hate masks, I hate face masks, but I love these. They are sticky and they're cold and they feel really good under the eyes. They're great for depuffing. they're great for under eye bags. I feel like my, um, I have a crease right here 
that is just an aging kind of dig that my eyes kind of sink in a little bit. I feel like that's significantly diminished since I've been using both of these. The first time I used one of these, I was like, oh, oh my goodness. Like I was so excited. I feel like the effects of this wear off after 24 hours though. I don't feel like they last. Same thing with this. If I put this on at night, when I wake up in the morning, I feel like my under eyes are more taut, but then throughout the day, they kind of go back to looking normal. So this is definitely something you have to keep using in order for it to work, but I feel like it's doing good things for my eyes and my wrinkles and the tautness of my skin. I feel like it's doing great things. So these are kind of the two products out of all of them that I really love, really love, that really make this purchase worth it for me. So just between, just this is $20 alone, so. And then the last thing in here is the moisturizer. I don't like this moisturizer, this is, it's called the antidote cooling day lotion again you get that cold feeling on your face and I don't feel like it truly moisturizes when I put it on my skin my skin will sometimes still feel dry and to me after moisturizing that's completely unacceptable so this is something that I wouldn't recommend you see I've used almost all of it um, and I I will continue to use it but I won't purchase this again this is something that I just I don't think is good so definitely some wins and some fails in that kit so that's why it's a great place at number five at number four this month, we have the Revlon Colorstay Not Just Nudes palettes. I have this one in the Passion Nudes. I also have number two in the Romantic Nudes. This is a huge jump for Revlon. Revlon eyeshadows are notoriously terrible. I mean, I, I've every time I've ever said, okay, I'm just gonna give these one more shot for Revlon eyeshadows, I've always regretted it every time. This is the exception. The L'Oreal palettes were my favorite of the drugstore palettes that came out, um, was it maybe six months ago or whatever? There was a huge push on drugstore palettes. The L'Oreal palettes were, the, were my favorites. I feel like this is definitely up there, if not better. I love that you get some shimmery shades, some matte shades, some satin shades in here. The thing that really sells me on these is the lasting power is fantastic. And I am shocked by that. Even without a primer, the lasting power in these shadows is wonderful. So so that's really where this gets me. They are a little more difficult to work with than the high-end shadows that I have, but they're not so difficult to work with that it's not worth the price point. Especially if you're in the market for a new nude palette, this one and the Romantic Nudes, just beautiful, beautiful palettes. Definitely recommend them, um, and, and I'm very much enjoying using them. I love the shade range. The shade range is perfect for lots of different skin tones, and they really knocked it out of the park with this. Good job, Revlon. I am very proud of you on this one. At number three, this actually was number one in my heart for a while. And it dropped to number three today. And this is the Blink Mascara Amplified. It is a tubing mascara. I got it in my BoxyCharm. And if you saw my BoxyCharm review, you've already seen what I'm going to say about this, except for the very end. So what this is, is it's a very large brush. You put on your mascara like normal. But what happens at the end of the day is that when you take it off, you take it off with just warm water and the tubes just slide off of your lashes. So there's no rubbing. And that is what makes this stuff magical. Now, the reason why it drops down from number one to number three is that I feel like as it's aging, the effects of the, lo the lengthening and the volumizing is not as good. And I've only had this open for about a month, three weeks, three weeks probably. And I feel like it's already starting to die a little bit on me, which makes me super sad because this was all of a sudden a holy grail status mascara out of nowhere. And now it's starting to die on me. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? I, what I would recommend if you wanted to try this is if you can get your hands on a deluxe size sample for cheaper, then I would recommend this. At this point, I'm not recommending getting a full size just because of it's, it's not aging well and it just breaks my heart, but it did introduce me to tubing mascaras, so that is bumping it up on my list for this month and I did love it for those first three weeks. I mean, just, oh, I didn't want to use anything else because of the not needing to rub my eyes to get my makeup off is just a whole nother world for me. It's a complete game changer, so that's why it's at number three this month. At number two this month is a complete tie. I could not decide because I love them for different reasons. Two brow products that I did a re full review of that I will link. There's a little eye that you'll see up in the corner. Go ahead and click that and that'll take you to the video uh, where I review these now. Or you can click the link down below after the video is over. Now this is the Maybelline Brow Drama Crayon Pomade and then this is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer. This one here, let's talk about this one. This one is, is just as good as my Anastasia Brow Wiz. It is very 
thin, it goes on creamy, it's got the spoolie on the back. Um, again, full review down below or click the I. Um, and then this one here is the, um, this one's a crayon form. Now this one, I got a lot of comments on that video about um, using this and what happens when the point goes down because this is not one that you can sharpen. Um, it does roll up that much. What you're going to do when this starts to die is you're going to take a brow, a brow brush and you're going to rub it in the product and you're going to rub it on your eye and it's going to work just as well. Uh, it, and I have used it that way and it does work just as well. So overall, I would recommend this one over this one just because of the value. But if you like that skinniness and you like this format better, I definitely recommend this. They're both 10 bucks. Either way, I really think you're going to like it as far as the formula. It's really just how you like it presented better and whether you like getting a lot more product for your money. And the number one product this month is a product I've actually had for a couple of months, but I've never mentioned it. And I think that it deserves the number one spot this month. And it is the BH Cosmetics Carly Bible Palette. I am not subscribed to Carly Bible. I, have, I don't think I've ever watched a single one of her videos. Um, I, I, just, I, I just haven't jumped on the Carly Bible video train yet. But I will tell you that this palette is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, and it's only $12.50 on the BH Cosmetics website right now. And this is all this is not sponsored. I was not sent this for review. This is I purchased this with my own money, like all of this. There isn't a single thing here that was sent to me except for that this came in my um my boxytron, which I do get for review. But other than that, I've paid for every single thing here with my own money. Now, this here. The pigmentation on these things is amazing. The lasting power is amazing. My only critique of this is I wish there were just a few more matte shades. Like a matte taupe would make me so happy. This is the closest we have to a matte taupe and it's just a little bit too dark. If they took this, knocked it down a notch and replaced one of these shades with it, we would be in serious business, serious business. These highlighters are gorgeous. They're also gorgeous as eyeshadows. This is an amazing, amazingly high quality palette. I would compare this to my high end eyeshadows. I would compare this to my Urban Decay. I would compare it to my Too Faced. I would compare it to all of those. This is amazing. I do recommend that you check out, they do have a brand new BH Cosmetics palette that is supposed to be just as the same quality as this. My friend Rochelle from Glam Moms just reviewed it. It's Pride Plus Prejudice Plus Zombies or Pride and Prejudice and Zombies palette. I will link her video down below if you want to see swatches of that palette, but she says that it's the same quality as this, so good for you BH Cosmetics. So that's it for my January favorites this month. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'm going to have it fly in right there for you so you can click it nice and easy if you're on a desktop or laptop computer. If you are on a mobile device, you can click the subscribe button down below this video when you turn your phone on its side like this. You'll be able to see the subscribe button. Definitely click subscribe so you can see my future videos, future reviews, future favorites videos, and what's up in makeup every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time where I tell you all the latest makeup releases all over the United States. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you so much. Mad love and I'll see you soon.